Hello everyone, it's been a while. I have been busy and um, I haven't made a video in a while. And I got a lot of subscribers in the past uh, few months. So thanks for everyone who subscribed to my channel. Here's a question I get asked all the time. Uh, development on Windows, especially if you want to run things that are only available on Linux, such as the NS3 simulator. So what do you do? Well, I believe well, most of you are familiar with the concept of using VirtualBox and running a virtual machine. I don't like virtual machines because they are heavy. Uh, so uh, what you can do is you can actually install Windows, uh, sorry, Ubuntu in a virtualized environment within Windows. Let me illustrate how it works. So I have Ubuntu here. And basically, I have an Ubuntu shell right here. So if I do up get update that should be sudo you know it does what it needs to do right i can go to my ns3 folder i can run the dwarf okay here's the interesting thing that you can do let me go to another folder Unix. if you have uh, visual studio code installed on your windows machine you can run code and let me say, I want to run this file. And basically, you run it. Basically, the first time you run it, it will install something called WSL server. Uh, basically, it does the connection between the two system. Um, uh, yeah, so you could edit it and it's in its right place. Um, what else is there? You can also, if I, let's say I want to copy a certain file here, I can run Windows Explorer. I have to specify exe for some reason. And I'm just going to say dot this, uh, this uh, particular uh, folder. And as you can see, it is stored into this uh, path. I could just copy this file, move it to you know somewhere else if I want to. Yeah? That's something you want to do. You can also have different terminals. For example, I like to use this terminal. I got it from the internet somewhere. It just has, gives me different colors. It doesn't support tabs, does it? Yeah, it doesn't support tabs. Then there is the Windows terminal, which you can get from the Windows Store. And um, let me, uh, terminal. I just installed it. Windows, yeah, so there it is. So it is in Windows now, so dire is the Windows command. Uh, I could do WSL and I'm in Ubuntu. Now inside that Ubuntu uh, installation, you could see, I will explain it in a minute. Uh, you could see that you can access the Windows partitions using slash mount slash C, that's the C drive and so on. So what is this thing called? This thing here is called uh, WSL. Let me close this. Windows Subsystem for Linux. So I have Windows Subsystem for Linux. And um, it says here you can use Explorer to open directories if you want to open them. So Windows Subsystem for Linux is actually a kind of a virtualization. It's not full virtualization. It's not full Linux kernel. Although the newer version, you name, uh, sorry, WSL2, if I do you name dash A, you could see that I'm running WSL2, which supports, I guess it supports all the Linux system level commands as opposed to WSL. Uh, what you really need is WSL. You don't need WSL2, but it, the installation is really simple and you can actually convert WSL to WSL2. So how do you install this? Uh, simple. You need to have a, uh, certain versions of Windows, like a, an updated version of Windows, right? Uh, we want to go to, and it, this works also on Windows Home. There's this thing called Turn Windows Features On or Off. Click that, and you can see different features that can be enabled. Internet Explorer 11. Huh. All right. We have here. Uh, for WSL2 virtualization, I check this one. You also have to check it in the BIOS. 
but you don't really need it, I think, for WSL2. What you really need to, is to check Windows Subsystem for Linux, check this, press OK, it will, you know, does some computation, takes some time, asks you to restart. And when you restart it, you have now added support for a subsystem for Linux. We're not done yet, we need to install Ubuntu. So to install Ubuntu, you go to the Microsoft Store and just look for Ubuntu. Ubuntu, and you could do version 20 and you could just install it, okay? And once that is done, you will find that you have Ubuntu right here. Uh, you can also install other versions of Windows, for example, uh, SOSI. Or, or, or like Sozi, Sozi, uh, Suzy, or whatever, you, whatever that's called. Uh, you can install that, and I think other versions as well. Um, let me see, WSL Linux. Wonder if it shows me the available ones. Debian, Kali. You can install Kali, uh, and so on. Anyway, one last thing to be able to run. Visual Studio Code for coding. See code dot, so I will open the whole directory. As you can see, I have the directory here. If you run it the first time, uh, first of all, you need to have uh, uh, Visual Studio Code installed on Windows. Once you run it from WSL, it will ask you to install the WSL server, and you could do that, and it will. Uh, and it will uh, basically, you'll be able to use it. Uh, the, uh, you'll be able to use Visual Studio Code to code that, so you don't need Vim, for example. Okay, I think that is it. Is there anything else I wanna talk about? No, so that's all you need to do. Um, it's faster than running a virtual machine. You don't need a dual boot and um, you can access your file in the C drive, in the D drive, and uh, if you want to copy your files, remember explorer.exe to access the files on the Ubuntu partition if you need to copy them. Uh, for WSL2, you can look at the instructions. You really don't... Uh, need that so uh, you could if you look at WSL2 it's just show you some differences and stuff like that WSL1 should be enough for you know learning but I think if you're doing networking and system level calls then you go with WS, WSL2 there's an instruction on how to do it uh, but that's I'll leave it there thank you very much thank you for all the subscribers and the good people that supported me. I've been busy and tired, uh, but um, I thought this would be important that I would make a video out of it. Thank you and have a good day. Bye-bye.